Hey everyone, I'm back. If you're new here, my name is Benji and I design and build open source synthesizer modules. It's been a while since my last video so I'd like to talk about what happened since. First of all, I did a lot of shop improvement stuff. I've been sharing my progress on Instagram. I put up some parts drawers. I added some shelves to my workbench. I moved stuff around with the goal of making my workshop as usable as possible for my synthesizer making. Also to make it as easy as possible to document my builds. I also built a new case. You can see it here behind me. It should give me enough room for new builds this year and I can't wait to fill it up with more modules. Lastly, I joined my very first group exhibition at Anima Art Space where I displayed one of my synth builds along with a DIY spring reverb tank that I made. The show was organized by our local synthesizer community called Synthicide. So my work was there alongside works by other members of the community, which was really nice. Anyway, in this video, I'd like to talk about dead bug builds. It's a way of building circuits without using perf board, strip boards, or PCBs. With dead bug, you only use wires as well as the leads of the components to connect parts together. I've mainly been inspired by Juanito Moore's builds where he makes really small balls of wires and components and jumps them into tin cans. So in this video, I'd like to show you how I do it by using this mini mic build that I just made. It's based on the ears module by Mutable Instruments. I use it to amplify piezo transducers. So my build starts with me designing the panel on OpenSCAD. In this part, I can decide how I want the layout to be, especially since OpenSCAD can give me a 3D preview. I use my Euro Panel Maker library, which I talked about in a previous video. Once I'm happy with the layout, I export my 3D model into an STL file which I can then load into Cura and prepare a G-code for my 3D printer. I then upload the G-code onto my 3D printer for printing and after an hour or so, I get my panel. As soon as I get the panel, I can mount all of the pots, jacks, and other controls that can be mounted. I can then wire up all of the ground connections. This will also double as scaffolding for my circuit. When soldering, I like to use blue tack to secure the panel onto the table and use a helping hand tool to hold the components while I solder. I recently got a hold of this jeweler's work holding tool that I like a lot. In this part, I have to straighten up a lot of wires. So here's a little tip on how I do it. I use two pairs of pliers to hold both ends of the wire while pulling the two ends apart. For short lengths like this, the wire should straighten up after a couple of turns. After the ground connections, I start mounting the other components such as the ICs, the resistors, and the other passives. I don't really plan these builds, so it's like working with a puzzle and you'll eventually get used to it. For power, I don't use standard Eurorack connectors because the sockets are a bit bulky and it would kinda defeat the purpose of doing a dead bug build. So instead, I use wires and I crimp my own JST connectors. The voltages will still be standard Eurorack with plus and minus 12 volts. Because of this, I had to design a power distribution board that supports both standards. This new board accepts standard Eurorack 16-pin sockets as well as my own 3-pin or 4-pin GST sockets. For this, I have to thank PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. PCB manufacturing is a great solution, especially if you have to have multiple copies of the same circuit. Like in my new case, for this one, I needed eight copies of my new power distribution board. And to print those, I used PCBWay. All I had to do was design the board on KiCad, export the Gerber files, and then order the PCBs through PCBWay's website. After submitting my order, I'll only have to wait a week or so until the boards 
arrive at my house. I then will only have to spend a couple of minutes installing all of the parts until I have enough distribution boards for my new case. All my files for this board is on my GitHub as well as PCBWay's shared project page where you can order the boards directly through them. Thank you PCBWay for always supporting my channel. Now let's talk about why I like doing dead bug builds compared to the more traditional perf board builds like this one. First of all, it's much cheaper because you don't have to buy the perf board. Wiring the components directly using the leads will also save you from spending too much on wires. Next is, it's much faster for me to do a freestyle build such as this one. The more you do it, the faster you recognize patterns and the build process just generally becomes much faster. With a perf board build, you'd ideally have to plan your layout ahead of time so that you can minimize the amount of board that you have to use. For me personally, that takes a lot of time that I'd rather use in designing an actual PCB later on. And finally, I like how compact the footprint is. If you take these examples for instance, this dead bug build is a Europi containing a lot more components compared to this old snare build that I did a couple of years back. If you have them side by side, the Europi has so much more components than the snare, but the snare still occupies a lot more space. Having limited space, especially on my smaller cases, I'd always prefer smaller modules so I can bring more whenever I go out to play music. So there you have it. For quick prototypes where I don't feel like designing a PCB yet, especially for those modules where I just want to see how it fits into my Eurorack workflow. I think building modules like this is a great option. I also honestly think it looks great. Let me know what you think about dead bug builds. And to those of you who've been watching my videos for a while now, I'd like to know what you think about this new format. That would be all for now. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you again in the next video.